Hey everybody, Nick Finelli here, and this is Blended Tech Learning's EdTech Office Hours. And it's a Monday, so we're on Facebook. And so tonight we have a couple of cool things in store for you. So one of them is uh, podcasting. So we have uh, a, a simple way to get podcasts for your class. Uh, let's say you're not in Apple school or you don't have uh, Apple products or you don't want to play them from your own personal device. Um, you can use Google Music uh, to get podcasts. So we're going to show, show you that and how to kind of maneuver around there. And then also, if you're interested in making some easy podcasts, Anchor.fm now has a web-based uh, format besides their, um, their fabulous um, way that they, they use it for mobile. They have the ability now to, to do that. So, uh, you know, you could be creating podcasts, students could, um, and it does kind of all of it for you. So it's a nice one package deal um, to do that. Then uh, we'll talk about, so, so there was questions that someone asked me about gaming. And when I heard this, I was thinking, well, you know, what in particular, you know, are you thinking about Minecraft, you think about other, and they were talking about more of like having students create games and using digital files that you would print out but actually make games, like a card deck or something like that. And so I thought about, well, you could use Google Drawings and Google Slides to make it. So I'm going to show you how to make a kind of a, a template and, and a thing for, for game cards. So that's, those are the questions that we had tonight, and we'll go over those things. But um, let's just start and just remind you to, uh, to go to blendedtechlearning.com. You can find me on Facebook, of course, and uh, this channel, Blend Tech Learn, and then also on Twitter at Nick Finelli. Also, you can use the hashtag AskNick to send in questions. And then, of course, all videos are not only on Facebook, but also on YouTube. And, of course, the uh, continue to go to courses.blendedtechlearning.com or just go to Blended Tech Learning and look for the courses. And you can go ahead and take some of the courses that I provide. Um, all right, so without further ado, let's get ourselves into podcasting. So this is Google Play Music. You can see up here in the top left. Just being logged in, it's pretty easy to show and, and get your, your items here. You can do a search. Um, if you have your own music library and you've uploaded. But if you go to the dots here, it's going to extend it down and show you more options. And one of the options here is podcast. All right, and so when you get to podcast, you're going to see a number of suggested, you know, top of the charts, that kind of thing. Um, but the thing about for schools, I mean, there's a lot of great things out there that people have made or... Um, you know, that they give you content that could help with your class, you know, having kids listen to it or something like that. So, like, one of the things that I like to listen to is called Hidden Brain. And there I start typing it up, and it's showing up here. So simply, just like any other, using a podcast app on Apple or here on Google Play, you just subscribe. And then once you subscribe, you're going to get, of course, um, reminders, but here we go. I can just click on play. The three dots here allows you to share that, and then it tells you more information about that episode, if that was something. So you could actually share out a single episode to students via a classroom or, or some other way, maybe use Schoology, some other way just to, to get them that link. So it's pretty easy to do that. Now, if I didn't want Hidden Brain and I wanted to go back, I can click on podcasts, and when I click on your podcast, it's just going to show me the ones that I've subscribed to. Um, just the player itself, down at the bottom, you probably have noticed a little shuffle, you can control the sound. You can also have cues. So this just means if you want to play certain things, maybe you want to play an episode or a certain part from here and then the next one you just set it up very similar if you've ever used iTunes um, but yeah you can you can get podcasts so you can search for any type of thing so um, my EdTech Roadshow which is coming soon will be on not only Apple podcasts but you'll be able to get them here 
And so the EdTech Roadshow is coming soon. And just to tell you about that quickly, it's just some ways for um, you to see how other people are using technology around the country. I visit a lot of places and talk to a lot of schools, and this is just kind of an insider look on, on what's going on at different schools and how they're using technology and um, the ways that professional development happens and just some interesting things going out on out there in the world. All right, so that's quickly just uh, just looking at podcasts. So now the, the next thing I want to talk about is actually creating some. And so, of course, you can create in lots of different versions, lots of different um, places. But one I like, and it's because especially the new um, web format, is anchor.fm. So we're going to switch over there, and I'm going to walk you through a little bit of that. So here it is, anchor.fm. Okay, you see at the top and it's both in the App Store and the Play Store so if you do have tablets or phones those nature you can get it there but also they have this version and so you can see first of all which is a nice thing it's 100% free um, it has sharing of the podcast it can be heard is, is it they actually distribute to both Apple and Google Play Music just with one click and you can podcast anywhere um, they also have some nice analytics, and then you can share transcribed videos. So a lot of little features for something that is free. So I'm going to click on Sign Up. And depending on whether you want to use a particular sign in. It does do Facebook and Twitter. It does not have uh, Google or an Office 365. So I am going to type one in right here just to get us started so you can see what it looks like. Uh, you know what? I was trying to log in instead of signing in. There we go. All right, so let's do this. Look how quickly it is. I already have a podcast, so I could bring it from somewhere else, or I want to make a new one. So what do we want to call this? And we'll just call this um, Office Hours Live with Nick. And I click Next. You get to choose cover art. If you don't want to use anything different, you can customize it later. They give you actually dimensions on what to do. They show down here below different ones that are available, but basically this is just what it would look like. You can always go back and change that. Hit next. Okay, and you have to describe. This is Office Hours Live. Actually, let me change it to EdTech Office Hours Live. And you just put your description or whatever you want in there. You pick a category. You have several categories, but definitely education, education technology is in there, K-12, to whatever you're, you're doing. And then they give you a custom URL, so it's based on your title. But if I wanted to change this, like I realized I need to make this EdTech Office Hours. And then I type in full name. And this is where I could sign up. And that's it. I'm going to ask you to save. And then it just walks you through an episode, how you have to make it. So there's a lot of nice handy tools. You can upload 
you can record, you can just um, add messages so that listeners can see the stuff, you can look at the history, and then if you need some transitions to go from one segment to another segment, you have those available. And uh, that's pretty much it. And you just start from there. So I could start recording this as I'm going. And we'll allow the microphone. Hopefully we won't have interference with two different microphones. But uh, let's do the built-in one so it has a different recording action. All right, so now it's recording. And um, I'll keep this going, and I'll record as we talk about our other stuff. But uh, we'll come back here at the end, and we'll see what it looks like. So coming back, we're going to talk about our next thing. So uh, podcasting, pretty easy. And now imagine doing that on your phone. Some other features that are on the phone that you'll notice is that you can... Um, have somebody else connect with you at the same time so they could be on their phone you could be on your phone and they would both be recorded so that's also nice instead of kind of recording a, a conversation so you could call people um, the next thing we're going to go into is the game cards so uh, I'm going to start out making kind of a template inside of Google Drawings and then we're going to go into Google Slides and kind of replicate them and then that's where we'll do most of our layout of the that template and then we'll um, you know of course you could uh, go into Docs and kind of create the rules if you wanted to, to create your own little rules action but uh, let's let me go to Drive right now and just show you a preview of this to kind of give you an idea and then we'll go ahead and make it switch this back there we go all right so I'm in drive I have a cover here for game cards Let's see if it pulls up there we go and so I'm just going to be in preview mode so you don't have to necessarily see the whole thing um, be able to look at so here's kind of the card layout so you know student may want to make a game about pro sports you know and or you know something in particular that you're having them do whatever you know whatever their their mode is going to be for using it but uh notice it's the square right here is this is the the length and width of a card so uh i measured a card and the one that i used right now here is a two and a fourth across by a three and a half down so that's kind of a card shape and then I thought well if we rounded the corners or something like that then we could have a nice curved tool so there's some white space around here so when we cut the edges off um, it's gonna look like a nice card and be able to kind of all be in sync together now this was done in drawings and so let's go over here I'm gonna go back out and I'm just gonna go to new and then drawings you could also go to the app launcher if you added it there. And go to more. And drawings. Now the nice thing about drawings is that you can, with, with most things, but specifically with drawings, is you can set it up for a particular size. And so to do that, you just go to the file. And then once you're in the file, you go all the way down to page setup and so right now I don't I don't know what this is exactly as far as size so we're gonna go down here to page setup and you'll get a pop-up that will show you it's a standard 4x3 but I want to go custom and when I click on custom it's actually going to show you in pixels or inches Click too fast. Try that again. All right, and then I can, of course, change this. So I want it two and a fourth, so 2.25 by 3.5 inches. There we go. So now I have my card size. Um, now, to help me make this and replicate this, um, because I can't put multiple, I mean, I, 
I could make this as big as an eight and a half by 11 and do it all on here instead of slides. But I like uh, being able to create the template here so that way it can move over. Notice it's also transparent background. So you'll see the, um, the gray and white checkerboard. So now I'm going to go in and add a shape. And so I'll do the rounded corners here and I'll just make it fill close to the area that I want. And then my guides will show me it's the center. I can make it less curved if I want it. There we go. And, and I'll just make it transparent and thicken my border up a little bit and maybe change my border color to blue. There we go. So that right there could be a template because the nice thing about this is this space will be able to work um, if I were to export it. I could download it as a PNG. So now it makes that exact space into a PNG file, but it looks and feels how I want the card to do. So then I could change the content um, later. So there's my game cards PNG file. So let me head back to the game card area here. And so if you do a preview here, and of course you're not going to be publishing something that has um, copyrighted materials, you know, past the, especially sports teams, Disney, people like that. They don't want you producing this thing and putting it online um, so that other people can, can actually have copies of those things. But so here's an example of the cards in a, you can see the outlines are here for the cutting lines. So that's actually the image that was brought in. And then these are just text boxes and pictures. So you can go through and see the, the different ones. And depending on, you know, of course, with any type of game cards or things like that, they have to come up with the whole concept ahead of time. So they can't just like, oh, I'm just going to make some cards. And so, you know, how the game rules are going to work, what's needed to be on the game. Um, card, what's important, you know, where do you want to position things. All of those things are important decisions and it helps people understand how important those decisions are um, when making a game or doing things. So the more students can get practice with making decisions and kind of deciding not only aesthetically how it looks but what is important and what needs to be shown. So this one is about the team name and when it was started um, originally, so like for instance, the Pelicans were not in, um, were originally in Charlotte, so that was 1987. Um, and there's uh, Southwest, there's their division, and championships. So there must be something in this game about championships this year, maybe the logo, maybe the team name, and their division. And so not only was there basketball, but I noticed there's also football and so forth. And we saw that on the, that first card too, that it must have to deal with all of these, so which is kind of cool. Um, so now, how did we get this into, so for instance this, into this area here? And also, um, one of the reasons why I would suggest using slides is because you can have the identical slide with the cover, because if you think about it, if you're making cards, you want the cards to, to mimic um, on the other side. So you can actually have, um, you know, front and back printing, and that way it makes it easier. Whereas on a, um, on a drawing, you're not able gonna, gonna be able to do front and back printing. Um, so this would make it easier that way. Now, so I have my game card, and now I'm gonna go back and I'll actually open this so you can see. So the next part would be going into slides and making a template. Um, so you have your game card, your card template, but actually having something to start with. And so you can see there's going to be a bunch of slides over here on the left. 
and we'll zoom in so you can see here um, the different parts. You can use just regular text boxes. You could use tables, although tables is going to put a border around it. Um, if you want a border, that's fine. That's actually a good idea if you want to use tables because then it it makes a space somebody knows where the space is. There's a lot of logos, I guess, to load. All right, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you get a better idea. All right, so you can see the logo here, the text is all consistent. So if you almost just think about it, if you make one page of what it's supposed to do, look and feel like as far as text and colors, then it's just a matter of clicking on the areas. So this looks like a text box and we could change any of those items. So if I wanted the Celtics to have 18, there we go. So it's simple editing right there um, with the text box. And then if you were thinking about how do we bring in the picture, well, remember any of these things, if I just click on a new page here, I'm going to do blank. I can just drag something from underneath, remember, and put it in there. Now when I zoom back out to fit it, there it is. And what I did here is I added a border. So I just did the um, border. And I did it kind of in a light gray. So that way you would know where to cut. But then it still gives kind of a white area too. So you got to have a white kind of in the blue border. And of course you can do Control D to copy and paste it over and then line up your lines if you want to cut at the same spot. Now as far as bringing in pictures, um, one of the, the things you could do, so you go to insert, go to image and search from the web and it's of course going to bring up your little explore box. And so let's Let's do something for the final four here. So we got Michigan Wolverines. And there's Michigan Lego. Of course, I could bring it in. And of course, I could resize it from the arrows and then center it within and that's also nice by having this as a separate image it's going to center it within it now remember you can also let me zoom in you can also crop your pictures so if I just wanted to show a certain part of this picture oops undo that. And you double click and then you look for the little line and then you just bring it down until it's where you want it. And now when I click off, that's the only part that we would see of the picture. So it just allows you to do cropping and then if you did that inside and you wanted it to be even bigger, you could move it around and then get certain things in. So now that's the only thing that would be seen. So the cropping tool in, in Google, it's not only in, in slides, but it's also in drawing, um, allows you to, you know, of course, expand objects, but then you have this nice little cropped window that allows you just to see those things. And if I wanted to expand it back out, so I could fit it, of course, to any shape or any place that I wanted. Uh, so 
those are just three quick things about um, going there and um, and making cards starting out with the process of doing it and drawing um, so that way it's that separate image coming in it makes it easier to kind of have a prepared template and then being able to add in text boxes and t uh, tables and things like that and images to edit it so let's go back to our uh, our anchor there and have 15 minutes there so I'm going to click on stop recording just so you can see what's going on and so now it's going to render that and so while that's rendering just check to see if there's any specific questions online right now about what's going on all right so somebody's asking you know could you do it all in drawings yes and Yes, you can do it all in slides if you wanted to also. So each of those would, would be a possibility. Um, I would not do it in docs just because you don't have that maneuverability of being able to move things around so much. Um, think about it when you bring in an image, you only have inline, you have wrap text, or you have um, or one other choice. Um, escaping me right now. Um, so that's what I would do and let's see here I'll go back to anchor and show you what happened because it looks like it's done all right so there it is all right so now it's recording and um, I'll keep this going and I'll record as we talk about our other stuff but uh, our size um, now to help me make this and replicate so that's pretty cool and so right now if I wanted to save it, save the episode, um, I can delete it, I can download audio file if I wanted to add transitions at certain times, I could have done that within, let me click on the transitions, so you can see some of those. And. Some are longer than others. So if I wanted to do a new recording, I could add another recording, and then I'd have two recordings, and maybe I add a transition in between. So it kind of has a little mixer in a way, if you if you want. So by clicking on the plus, there it now puts it over there. Now let's go down here and we'll just do a random. I like the Jetsons. Let's see what that is. I don't know if that's so Jetson like. But there we go. We'll add that. So now it adds that into the episode. And then, of course, if I recorded something else, bam, I add it to it. So now they could listen. I could have intro music of my own, upload, all sorts of stuff. So, I mean, imagine with kids, um, if they get a hold of something like this and you, you know, Ask them to create something um, with their voices and with their with their um, learning and to, to explain how they're doing things. And I just think there's it's a powerful tool out there that not a lot of schools are doing um, on a consistent basis. They might do it for like a special event or something like that, but not just to do every day. Um, I did know a teacher once that basically recorded what their homework was in their voice, explained it and did that and basically did it in this podcast type format so that parents could just listen and, and find out without having to read anything. So that's also just another possibility. Um, so I'm gonna click save and there we go. Episode one is ready to publish. There are some advanced publishing options. And so this involves is this full episode, is it clean, how many, what season is it, so it kind of controls a lot of these things. When it says publish everywhere, it's going to give you the ability to publish this on six different platforms. So now I'm going to go to publish episode, and it's going to distribute on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play Music, Overcast, and Pocket Cast. And that's it, they do the rest.
and you can see your statistics and things what's going on all right well this was great I appreciate you guys coming along and learning a couple things remember we did podcasting from Google Play Music um, then we also looked at Anchor and actually created a podcast and then we looked at uh, creating your own game cards using Google Drawings and Slides and so hopefully you got some good ideas and some things are starting to churn on how you want to use technology and finding some good ways to, to do those things um, back so that's it for today I appreciate everything and uh, we'll talk next Thursday on YouTube and looking forward to, actually just thought of that note Thursday we will not be broadcasting and um, we're actually going to take a, a couple weeks off so we'll be back in uh, in about two weeks so looking at uh, the middle of April on April the 16th I believe is when we'll we'll be starting again so uh, hope you guys have a nice uh, break if you're having a spring break if not if you've already had it hope it was restful and you're ready for this last part of the year all right bye everybody <laughs>